Hi, this is Stacey Hagenbotham with GigaOM, and I'm here with Gustavo Perlich, the CEO of Broadstripe, a cable operator. Can you tell me a little bit about your about Broadstripe and the customers you serve first? Yes, uh, Broadstripe is a company who serves uh, customers in four uh, states. Uh, one is uh, in, in, in the region around Baltimore. Uh, we are also in Michigan. We are in Washington State, serving several communities, and also in Oregon. All right. Um, and earlier, or actually yesterday, you were speaking about kind of the way that pay TV is going and kind of the challenges for small cable operators, but also kind of what you hope for in regulation and what you are going to do with your cable plant in the coming years to kind of deal with the high cost of pay TV programming and the coming trend of a bunch of people watching new TV or internet TV. Sure. Let's start with the, the regulatory environment. Yeah, the, the most uh, challenging piece for any cable company, irrespective of the size, is the programming cost. Uh, people want content, and there is a race for content today. Uh, not necessary content that people see, but you have to have it to have the perception that your lineups or the channel lineups are comprehensive enough. Uh, at the same time, there is a significant need for high definition. Uh, uh, the cable industry changed when the plasma and LCD displays were introduced. Uh, the, the cable industry in general was predicated on the basis of the small CRT or CRTs, in which the perception of quality, the signal that reached the, 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 the end uh, consumer was not very high. With the, the, the high definition TVs, there is a need for high definition content, which poses a significant challenge on, number one, the programming content, second, the quality of the plant and the bandwidth. So uh, regaining the analog bandwidth becomes a significant challenge as well as the uh, uh, content cost. The content cost is, is, is a real problem because if, if you look at uh, from the pure economic standpoint, what you're buying, you're buying digital content. It's a signal that is beamed from a satellite like the CNN signal is being from a satellite and everybody receives the same signal. However, people pay different prices for that signal. And you uh, pay more, correct? You pay... Well, relative to uh, uh, organizations of huge size. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, uh, the cable companies uh, needed to create uh, cooperatives in which they could aggregate purchases. And that's how NCTC was created mm -hmm. with the objective of buying in, in, in large quantities. However, uh, those, uh, those organizations are not uh, as efficient as uh, we'd like to see because we still see ten, between five to ten points of EBITDA margin uh, uh, relative to the big operators. So, uh, And you believe the FCC should come in and talk to content owners about regulating the price that you guys would end up paying for content and kind of equalize it across the board? Well, I think it's in the best interest of, of, of the, the consumer to get some fairness on, 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 the, on, on, on the content pricing because at the same time if you look at the SEC, SEC has been very active on the telecom side providing a fair playing field for interconnect cost, for termination cost, which are also a very similar in terms of digital content. It's a termination, it's, 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 it's the process to deliver a call to the final user and everybody pays the same which is basically very similar to this example I described regarding the, the signal beamed from, from, from the satellite. Uh, and the former commissioner came up with a very interesting idea. Uh, he, he didn't look at uh, the, 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 the content cost, but he looked at the unbundling, mm -hmm. the, the a la carte, which is also another important thing because you not only are, are st stuck with a huge uh, uh, cost, the, the, which uh, differentiate the size of, of your purchases, but also you're stuck with content that you need to buy and you need to allocate on certain pieces of, of your programming lineup, uh, which uh, doesn't give you flexibility to operate in this uh, dynamic environment. Now, you were earlier telling me that that kind of a la carte programming is, getting, is beginning to be offered online. And so you were talking about making more investment in your broadband lineup as opposed to your... Well, what's happening is that um, we, we, we see that more and more and more people are watching TV in, in real time or, or uh, deferred time uh, through online. 
it's growing at an incredible rate and and then if you look at our investments we're putting a lot of emphasis on improving the quality of our data speed our data networks which has a major impact on both on the voice side of the business as well as us on the video but mainly with the objective of, of having a very very good data offering so preparing ourselves for the, the world in which content will be delivered through the internet as well all right I think that's it. Anything else you want to add? Uh, well, I, I'm very impressed with uh, this uh, conference uh, in the sense that uh, I've seen uh, lots of very interesting ideas about best practices and I think that uh, this is how you, you make progress. I mean, see how things work and copy them with pride. I mean, <laughs> and this is a great, great uh, forum to experience that. I know there's a lot of talk about the value that ISPs or carriers can bring to the entire changing ecosystem, so we'll call it the IP ecosystem. Do you believe that as a cable provider, are you guys going to be a dumb pipe into the home or how will you kind of fight against that or is it worth fighting against it? How will you capitalize on that? No, actually, what happened is the technology, I mean, if you look at it today, the center of all the activity is the head end. Now, the head end receives programming, as I said before, from, from different sources as well, from video on demand and from the connection through the internet. And if you look at, uh, we could extend that, uh, since we're connected to the internet, we also could extend to out of franchise uh, users. So, uh, and uh, for us, we have to think out of the box. We don't have to look at uh, the cable company as a company, uh, just providing services to those who are linked to us via mm -hmm. 